Okay, hello everyone, um, and welcome to our presentation from Enterprise to Voyager, everyone on the content bridge. And with me in the room is my colleague Tulika Garg. Uh, she's the senior product manager for XML documentation for Adobe Experience Manager, in the technical communication unit of Adobe. And my name is Stefan Gens, and I'm the senior worldwide evangelist uh, for technical communication at Adobe. And um, Tulika, what will we talk about today? Um, we will talk about silos. We will talk about content reuse and content consistency. We will talk about online collaboration, which has become increasingly important uh, in the last 12 months. It was important before, but it became more and more important uh, since everyone is working in a home office uh, these days. And we will talk about review, especially online review and uh, how subject matter experts and uh, engineers and other content contributors can review content and uh, improve content all in an online scenario and we will talk about also online translation management and uh, how we can bring our content global in uh, light speed and in the end of the presentation uh, we will talk about content delivery and um, uh, how we can ship our or deliver our content to uh, the content consumers and uh, our customers so Tulika, what will we show so what we will show you we will show you today xml documentation for adobe experience manager which is adobe's data ccms offering an end-to-end -end component content management system to manage all your content need for structured content and solve all the challenges that Stefan just listed. And as part of the demo, we'll show you next generation asset management, a highly innovative online data authoring where you are doing super powerful data authoring, but all in, an, in a web environment. Collaboration, but with an online review, which resides within the system and integrate so powerfully with your web editor that you're never stepping out of the system for one second, and then expanding your global reach and making your content fully global via taking care of all your translation and localization needs, and then exploring limitless publishing to multiple channels, multiple formats in at a click of a button. Awesome, and rest assured, that the whole session, I will challenge my colleague Tulika a lot and ask her a lot of questions and uh, give her a lot of difficult tasks to uh, solve. And uh, let's see if she can deliver on all these questions and challenges uh, that I will throw at her. So over to you, Tulika. Engage. Bring it on, Stefan. So these are all the challenges that uh, a lot of companies uh, are facing. Um, but Let's have a look how that actually looks in practice with Adobe Experience Manager. And my colleague Tilika, she will guide you now through the different components that we have in a Adobe Experience Manager, or short AM, and starting with assets and uh, sites, and then the XML documentation editor. So Tulika, over to you. Thank you, Stefan. Yeah, I think it's always fun when we get to see things in action. So we have talked about it a lot. So now let's see how it works in Adobe Experience Manager. The first thing that I want to show here is that we talked a lot about how this whole solution is aimed at reducing and breaking down the silos between the marketing and the technical content. And as we mentioned, Adobe Experience Manager is the place where the marketers for your organization are managing their content for the marketing side. So let me start off by showing that. This is uh, the landing or the home page for your Adobe Experience Manager. And as soon as you land here, you see that there's this tile which takes you to the sites area. This is the area where the marketers are managing the marketing website. And let's look at one of one such site. It's called VDetail. And as you can see, the marketers have created their localized sites for different regions and within regions for different languages. And these sites contain their transactional or commerce related stuff where they're actually selling the stuff to the end users. This is all residing in Adobe Experience Manager. Now, if we go back to the home or the landing page, you can see the assets area. And when we go in the assets area, this is where you start seeing the multimedia asset and 
your data asset. So let me just take you to one such folder. Here we have organized again the content by languages. They are separated in different locales and the lo internationalization and translation becomes easy. Now, if I go inside the English folder, I have uh, organized the content as per divergence 10. Let's go inside the STC folder here, which I created. And you can see I have my XML, which are actually the data files in here. Residing next to these data and data map files is the multimedia asset also. And it's all within the same system. I have not yet stepped out of the system. So these image or the multimedia assets which are in the system can be used across the marketing content and the technical content. This is also a full blown multimedia asset management system. So you can manage your multimedia assets by tagging them, by organizing them, and by even creating localized copy when it comes to snapshots which have some text within the images. So let's take a look at one of these assets in detail. I'll select this assets and go to properties to look at the metadata. So as you can see, there are a number of options available for this particular asset. It's a full blown digital asset management system. So you can provide the title metadata and description metadata to this image, and you can even add your own tags. Let me double click on the tagging part. You have the full taxonomy management system also available within the system. Let me quickly show you that this is the entire taxonomy for this organization that we have created within the system. So you're not paying anything extra going to an extra another service or landing into a different user interface just to manage your tags. This particular use case, uh, I have created my own taxonomy. We had this guide for AM forms and it's a very minimal taxonomy just for this demo use case, but we have created two tags and I would like to segregate my multimedia assets, uh, describing them whether they are screenshots of the main product or whether they are screenshots of the installer products. So in this case, this uh, image that I'm looking at, it's actually a screenshot from the main product. So I can just go ahead and tag it with that. And it's as simple as that. So it shows me that this image belongs to the forms guide namespace. And within that namespace, it's a screenshot. Uh, as I mentioned, the system also provides you capability to be able to localize even at the multimedia level. So I can specify in this particular image, there are a number of strings because it's actually a screenshot of the product. So I can say, what is the language? And then I can localize this image and get locale specific snapshots for the asset. Let me save this tag and go back to the asset view. And this is what we were looking at for our asset management. Let's go and take a look at our data content. So within the data content is it is at guide level. I have this guide for AM forms documentation. So this is my data map and I've kept all my topics in the topics folder. Clicking on the data map brings up the entire dashboard, which is my go to place and one place from which I can manage all my content within this guide and do every operation related to this content. I'll start by looking at individual topics and working at topic levels, and then we'll go further into operations uh, which are specific to guides also. So Stefan, uh, what would you like me to do? Create a new topic, edit an existing topic, tell me. Show me how to create a topic. Absolutely, you got it. Let me take you to the interface from where you can create topics and add it to this map. So I'll say edit yeah. topic. Would you like me to do something more challenging? Trust me, I can uh, do it. All. No, I said that looks good. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, as long as you're happy. Uh, I clicked on edit topics and it launches the editor interface. Now this is a super powerful all-in-one editor interface from which you can create new content, edit existing content and do a lot more, which we can definitely not capture in this particular dem demo because of lack of time, but we'll try to show you some of the cool stuff here. Let's look at my existing content. Let's start with one of the topics and this is 
an existing topic in this map. And now as Stefan challenged me, he would like me to create a new content. How about I go to my repository view here and look at where I want to create a new topic. So for this particular content, since I want it to be a part of this guide, I'll just go and create it within the topics area. And I'll just say create a new topic. I get the complete list of templates to choose from. So it's you don't have to start from scratch. You can have templates according to your organization or even your own department at any level. Let me start with a basic topic template. I can give it a title here. The We'll call it new installation instruction because we just got an upgrade done, create. And it's as simple as that. And as you can already see this wiggly red line, so we have a spell check embedded in here. I can start writing it right away in a very word-like interface. You can just start typing away in free format and even start adding things like images, tables, and you've got a very rich toolbar. I will start, let's say, by adding my installation steps here. And step two, you can start by adding images via the toolbar. You showed me that image that the marketing department is using uh, on their website. And I, as a technical writer, have the need to use the same image and screenshot that the marketing department is using on the public website. I would like to, you to challenge and insert that same image that the marketing department is using. Do they need to send no. that by email to you? Not at all, Stefan. Like I said, this whole solution is aimed at breaking down those silos. So there's no of the system communication happening here where I pick up the phone. Stefan, can you send me that image that you use because I want to include it in guide? Not at all, because now we are working in the same system. We have access to each other's assets. So all I have to do is just go to the image library, browse. It it will show me the entire library which is available to the marketing department and it's now also available to the technical department. So let me take you up on your challenge. Like I showed you, all the assets for the marketing department are managed here in the assets interface. They're all available here. And I'm just going to pick up one of the image assets from the software division, which the marketing department is using. And I'm directly going to use the marketing image, which has a very innovative name, of course, the marketing image, <laughs> and include it right here. And I can even give it a nice title to make my marketing fans happy. And even for accessibility, you could insert an alternate text. Very nice. Good. This is the power of the system that we are collaborating within the system, never stepping outside the system. If the marketing department uh, decides that uh, these corners in this image, uh, they should be in red and they replace that image in the asset management, um, will it update in my data topic here as well? You gotta be finicky with your image corners, right? But you know, we've got <laughs> it all covered. Even though the marketing team and I have access to the same image, what I'm actually working with is a reference. So it is still the common asset in the library that is getting updated. So if the marketing team goes and updates this asset, I don't have to make a single change to this topic because it's just referencing this image via reference and I'll just automatically start seeing a new image here in the context of this technical content too. That makes my life so much more easy. Yeah, that's what we really want to do here for all our customers. So let me quickly save these changes and which is again just a one click step. I was just talking about in context of reuse, right? So one of the things that we want to enhance is enable reuse and it's not just in terms of experience, it's a huge boost of pro to productivity. And this is something we talked about earlier, Stefan and I, that one of the major detriments to productivity is redundancy. And it's just not productivity. It leads to bad user experience because the content is out of sync and the messaging is out of sync. As long as the system can enable higher productivity by enabling higher reuse, that's all we want to see. So we've already seen one reuse across the marketing and technical department in terms of sharing common asset library. You can do the same in terms of content also. So let me quickly show you how that works. Let's say we the marketing team has created one 
table of conventions and they want to make sure that everybody is using that same table of convention. I don't want to copy paste that across content. I would want to be able to reference it from within my content. I don't want it to be a cross ref because that leads to bad user experience, right? I don't want my end user to click on a link to get to some content. I want that content to be rendered within the context of the content that end user is viewing. So for that, you can do a quick contrib insert. So I'll just click on this link to insert reusable content. This is the topic where we have created the common conventions which can be used across our guide and it's in the form of this nice table and it has an ID. So I'll just select this voila, and it's inserted and it's inserted as a conref. So as you can see, if I try to edit, it will very nicely tell me that while you're able to see it here and it's embedded, it's a reference and it's read only and I cannot edit it in context of this document. Does that push the limits of reuse for you, Stefan? Yeah, that's pretty nice. All right. So let me just quickly put a cherry on top and save this document nicely. And this time I'll save it as a new version. You can manage the entire version history of your content in this library along with nice comments. I can just say I added the conventions table here and so that every version is marked with some comment history so that if you want to look, go back and look what changes were made or why a new version was created, you can do that. And you can even add easy to read or look up labels. These you would usually usually use to identify your content and mark them for releases. So let's say this is guide 2.0 and you can create that label and save this content. Can I also conditionalize content, assigning it to a specific audience that I want to, uh, when I want to create multiple versions? versions of one document, like an Absolutely. audience attribute. Absolutely, you've got it, Stefan. This is your day. You wanted some audience in there, you've got it. So you can select any content at paragraph level, at tables, or you can even conditionalize your images within this document. You can just start adding attributes from this right pane and it's you want to have some audience in there. And as you can see, the audience taxonomy is pre-populated. Let's say this is an installation guide. So most probably the audience would be the administrator. That's it. So your content is conditionalized and you can just hit, hit save. And as you can see, the color coding and the highlighting to indicate that this is conditionalized content. Great. Now, Tulika, I'm a little bit of an XML geek and I love XML and angel <laughs> brackets and so, and I would like to see the structure. I'm creating structured content, so I also want to see something like a structure view, a tree view of my XML content, and maybe sometimes from time to time also edit uh, the source code of that document. Is that possible in this solution as well? Like I said, Stefan, this is your day. Whatever you ask for, you get in the system. So you see this neat, very intuitive source button here? That's your gateway into the source view. So all you have but to do is click on that. View. I cannot edit it there, right? You can totally edit the content here to your heart's desire. It's a full-fledged XML editor. So as you can see, you get context relevance autocomplete suggestions. As soon as I hit enter within a tag, it will show me a list of attributes which are allowed within this tag. It will not show me a complete list. It will just show me the list of attributes which are allowed within this tag. It's good form to give some ID. I will just give it some ID. Even if you want to like start adding new tags, it will show you the list of tags that are allowed at that level. And if you start try and add a tag which is not allowed. It will start showing you errors on that tag also. So it's full blown XML editing with schema validation, not just like that it's well formed XML, but it's validated XML as per the schema. Okay, great. Um, when you go back to the author view. I know what you're getting at, so let me preempt that and add some changes here. And we'll go back to the author view and you can see the changes are available in the author view. 
and okay. I was just trying to PM, but if you've got a different challenge for me in there, I'm totally up for it. Okay, um, I see that you have a breadcrumb navigation there at the top to see a little bit of the structure of the document. But is there also something like a tree view? Because I have that in Franica and I like it to uh, navigate through the content. Absolutely. So like I said, this is a full-blown XML editor with the convenience of a free flow editing like Word. But we've got all the XML views you can ask for. So you see the outline view here. This is the outline view, which shows you the tree view of the structure. So while the breadcrumb view shows you the current tag or its position in the whole document, but if you would like to see the entire tree blown up, this is the place you go to. And as you can see, whenever I am within any particular tag, the outline view will correspondingly highlight the relevant tag in real time. So as I jump from different elements, you can see the current navigation happening in real time on the outline view to show the corresponding position in the outline view or the awesome. key view, if you may call it. Very nice. Yeah, cool. Very impressive. <laughs> Trust me, Stefan, I could go on and on about this entire editor interface all day. One of my major challenges I have in my team is we need to review the content. Uh, we we have subject matter experts, external experts, teammates, content approvers, etc. And they all want to they will all want to have a word on my content. And can I organize a review process that is easy to use and that can involve everyone who needs to review my content? Oh Stefan, absolutely. I mean you made my day. We all love our subject matter experts, don't we? We all I have got a nickname for them. I'm sure you do. <laughs> so let me <laughs> but I don't tell you. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe in, you know, maybe in secret later. We'll we'll exchange those notes. So let me show you the all powerful review process of the system. Let me just quickly save these changes that I've made here. Let's pick a topic that we would like to review. So I'll go back to the STC folder that I've created. Let's say we want to review this installation document. So let's just do that. So you can just quickly kick off a review right here from this interface. And I'll say, I want to create a review for the installation guide. And I'll put it in one of the projects. I can assign it to different users. So. I have a reviewers group created for this project and I'll assign it to the reviewers of that project. I'll be happy to assign it to Stefan as well. We can never push a documentation out unless Stefan has taken a look. Provide your expert opinion here. And of course, we should never lose our basic courtesies. So, and I'm feeling generous today. So Stefan, I'll give you over a week to finish this review. And it can be harder with me. Otherwise, I will do it in the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, Stefan. You know you like me. So I'm sure you're going to help me and quickly complete this review right away. And I'm going to open this topic in my authoring view. And as you can see, this little review Thing popped up here and it shows that this topic is part of this particular review which I just created. The, I gave it the title installation guide of AM Forms. I believe Stefan in parallel is looking at his emails where he should have no received a notification to review this document. Stefan, how is it looking out there? Uh oh, okay. I can see his comments showing up. Yeah, I'm reviewing the content and I'm not very happy with it. Um... I mean, uh, really, do you have to be that finicky with the, I mean, deployment is a totally valid word. Reply to Stefan right here in this interface. If you think it's, if you, if you think it's not right, you can reject or comment. Yeah, that, of course, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to give you a thumbs down. I'm sorry, Stefan. I think it is totally acceptable word. Uh, okay. This one I'll take. I think that's a valid point. We don't need this part because most of our uh, this particular use case are Windows users. So I accept that comment. Good feedback there, Stefan. Mm, yeah, you're right. We should adhere to the structure and make use of as many structured elements as possible. So I will make this change, but 
maybe in the next release, you can add free flowing comments as well. So as you can see, Stefan has still now added multiple type of comments here. So you can highlight, you can strike through, and you can even add free flowing comment, which can be put anywhere in the content. One thing that which you can totally also do is even attach attachments to your content. Uh, I like the use of smileys in your comments, Sifan. <laughs> That's really cool. Thanks for making me feel good about my not so kind comment. <laughs> so uh, again, I think uh, with me and Sifan, we can go back and forth on this in real time whole day. But just to get that thing wrapped up in the interest of time, we can see this is a very highly interactive in real time review, which is very, very efficient for me as an author where I'm not stepping out of this or creating PDF or putting it in an external server and then trying to review there and trying to bring it back. So all the mess messy steps around that are not there anymore. Then I said like bringing it back. I think that is also a big part of it. Stefan has made some really good comments here. I want to be able to incorporate them. There's definitely this side by side view where I can see the comments Stefan is making and I can try and make the same on the left hand side, which in itself is a super efficient thing to do and very powerful in it. But wouldn't it be really wonderful if I was just directly able to import the comments that Stefan made as track changes within my document? So that will save me a lot of time. What I can do is use this little icon here. It says import comments into author view. What it will do is whatever the comments or suggestions Stefan has made, it will bring them in my document. So let me just click that and my comments are imported successfully. So now I can get rid of the side by side view because now the changes are available directly here. I can see what I want to do with this change. So this is the deletion that Stefan has suggested and I had commented earlier that I think it's a good change. So I brought it in this view and I just say I accept it. I don't have to make a single edit by hand. So all the time Stefan has invested in suggesting changes as strike throughs or inserts, I'm able to use that time here by directly bringing them as changes. And I just save a new version and say reviewed by Stefan. So Stefan, okay. does this meet your review needs and are you a happy reviewer today? Absolutely. And I like that uh, online collaboration aspect in real time of it uh, a lot. But I have uh, some maybe last or second to last challenge for you today, Tulika, and that is we produce content not only in English. Uh, we have to deliver our content in translated forms to our global audience. That's an excellent question, Stefan. I'm so happy that you asked that. I'm sure you have an inkling on, as to what the answer is going to be because when we started looking at the system and started looking at our content hierarchy, we talked about this, that our content is organized by locale. This is a system which drives you to be locale aware, to be globalization ready, and to organize your content correctly. And it provides you complete support for managing the status of your localizations. Take a look at what that means, that it completely manages your multiple languages. We were looking at our AEM forms documentation, and I said this is our go-to place for doing anything related to this guide. As you can see, we have a translation tab here. So as soon as I go to the translation tab, it shows me the locales that I've configured in this system. My locales are for my organization. So let's say even for our department, we have decided we'll be working with these four locales and I can see what is the status of this documentation in these locales. For now, say we are releasing this guide in English, French and German because we don't want to make Stefan unhappy. And I can click on done and it will show me the status of each and every topic in context of that language. And I can see that it's showing that my language copies are out of date, which is a little surprising for me because I think 
I updated my content. So let's go and see what's happening here. While I did update my French localized copies, sent the content for translation, I forgot to send it for German. And my system here, which is tracking whether my localized copies are in sync or not, is able to show me that I don't even have a German copy. I'm sorry about that, Stefan. I'm going to fix that right away. <laughs> So what I'll quickly do is I'll just set the translation status as I'm just looking to first create my missing copies. So, and I filter this and it will now start showing me that all the German language copies are missing. And I'm sure Stefan is not happy about that. So I'm going to double down on this, quickly select them all and create a translation project to get my German copies ready. I already have a translation project created. I'm just going to add this there and say start. And as you can see, I don't have to go and manually find the content. We've got this very simple to use filters here. It says that for French and German, if there are any missing copies, just show me those. I select them all with a single click at the top and add them to a project. And now let me go back to the project view to show you that the translation project has been created. This is the translation project that we are using. And as you can see, a German project has been created here. And if we go in there, the translation job has been created. And like I mentioned that I distinctly remember that I updated everything for French and my French status should be completely up to date, which is looking good. But I see this one particular topic out of date and I know what why that the case is because I had to take some review feedback from Stefan and I made those changes in English. My French copy has gone out of sync because I updated the English source, but I didn't send it for translation. So while my other copies are all fine. This particular topic still needs to be sent for translation. The system checks in the background which topics you actually change. So you don't need to maintain an external access sheet with all the names of your topics and make check marks. Uh, this is, I did not change that. This doesn't go out to translation. This goes out to translation because I changed it today. So the system really tracks that in the background and um, reduces uh, translation costs with that and uh, effort and uh, the time that is needed to update my French uh, copy of my English source document. Great. This is cool. I love that. Absolutely. And isn't it a huge energy and cost saver? You, you, you don't have to send the whole guide just because you changed one topic. And right. the system will tell you exactly which topic changed. So all you have to just do is now select this topic and select send it over for translation pretty much the way I did send the whole German translation project. Cool. We are running nearly out of time. So I have just one last challenge for you, Tulika. At some point, I also need to publish my content. I'm a little bit split between, on one hand, I want to have my content online, but I also want to have it as a PDF because I think our readers should be able to decide on their own when and how and where they consume the content in which format. Some might want to prefer a web, some might uh, want to prefer a nice PDF. I bet this is something you can't do uh, to publish to both channels very conveniently to my nice web portal and the PDF. Come on, Stefan. I thought you would have learned by now that if you <laughs> challenge me, you know you, what you're going to get. I, for one, believe in complete democracy of content delivery. I love people who love their PDF. We are Adobe after all. And I love people who love their HTML. But we also have an all-powerful delivery mechanism within Adobe Experience Manager where you can host your content as rich HTML5 deliverables within the system. So, Stefan, I'm going to take you up on your challenge and deliver this content in all the format that you asked for. So going back to this dashboard for my guide for AM forms, you can see there are these output presets. These are pre-configured output presets and you can create as many as you like for your organizational needs for different output formats. So you can generate a PDF or you can generate HTML5 to take it to an external server or knowledge base, or you can even generate AM sites, which is the marketing site that I just showed showed you at the beginning of this demo for the marketers. When I say the solution is breaking down silos, it's doing that 
not at the authoring or the content management level, but it's doing that at the content delivery level also. So what does it mean to publish to A-Insight? It means publishing to an interface to the same template that your marketers are using so that you have the same look and feel and the same experience for your technical documentation users as they see when they go to make the purchase decision or the pre-sales content on the marketing side. Now, isn't that super powerful? That is super powerful, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that, one this... question, I saw that um, um, when you clicked PDF, uh, I saw on the right side, I saw, did I open toolkit? Uh, is that integrated? Oh, absolutely. Like I said, this is pretty much everything out of the box. We've got taxonomy out of the box. We've got inline review out of the box. And we've got a data OT out of the box. I could leverage my existing did I open toolkit implementation for a nice looking PDF output. What is my colleagues have created really nice looking uh, PDF, uh, templates for uh, data publishing with Framaker. Is that possible somehow to implement here as well? Absolutely. So you see this PDF uh, preset that we have created which says FMPS PDF and mm. you can say That's that cool. you can generate your PDF using Framemaker Publishing Server and connect to your Framemaker Publishing Server and bring in your Framemaker templates. So <laughs> I think I will have to give up to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah, yet so far. You have a yes on every answer, uh, question. <laughs> like I said, this is your day. We believe in providing a lot of things out of box. We understand the need for users to bring in their existing templates, be it data OT or be it frame maker or even HTML templates which they have created for data OT. So we provide a way to bring in their templates, their taxonomy, so that they can use this system and unleash the productivity of their authoring teams. And now just to bring it all to a wrap, like you asked, I'm going to show you one of the generated outputs for the AM site. You can see all the outputs that are generated here in the output tabs. This is one of the outputs that we have generated using an AM site template. And as you can see, it's a very rich HTML5 output and a lot of things that would you would probably be integrating as a separate service in some of the standard HTML5 outputs, you get in this system out of the box. You have the search within the document and within the entire system. So it comes with a full-blown search engine to provide the search across your entire site, your search within the document, and this goes and integrates nicely with your entire marketing site also. So what you see at the top here, you see you have your organization's branding. You can, this is just one guide, which is this particular guide, configuring Adobe Experience Manager for JBoss, but all your product guides, they're all accessible from the same interface. We have just published this one guide, but it's sitting next to existing marketing content and even the other technical documentation content and you have rating of the documents which can feed back to your authors and they can see what kind of end user rating they're getting on their content. Pretty much the entire uh, standard technical documentation things like a table of content, all those you're getting and the related information within this template. And you can even download a PDF at page level from this interface. So with that, I believe I have satisfied all your challenges today, Stefan. And I hope it was a useful demo to explain how the system break, truly breaks down the silos between marketing and technical documentation and unleashes the productivity and the creativity for authors by enabling reuse and integration with existing solutions and templates. Awesome, Tulika. Um, just one last question. Um, I guess I can also use Framaker to author my data content and check it in, check it out with uh, AM Docs. I mean, I know, I knew you were never gonna run out of your challenges, but I should let you know that, like I said, I'm pretty much ready for everything. So just to show you that last one thing, for any existing document, you are able to open it in FrameMaker and start editing in FrameMaker right away. Other than that, also, if you want to connect to the whole repository directly, FrameMaker and do your editing, authoring, creating new content, editing maps, pretty much everything you can do from FrameMaker too. Good. I think uh, 
I, I, I'm running out of ideas uh, of challenging you with things that you might not be able to do. Uh, so I think we can call it a day. Oh, wait, wait. I have one last challenge, and I'm sure you cannot do that one. Some of my authors like oxygen a lot. They like to edit their data content in oxygen, and I'm pretty sure you cannot connect with oxygen. Like I said, Stefan, we believe in unleashing productivity and creative, uh, creativity for authors and allowing integration with systems that they work best with. And if authors work best with Oxygen, we've got an Oxygen connector for them where they can integrate their repository with Oxygen, edit within the Oxygen interface, and do all the version management, check in, check out, edit, and even create new topics right from Oxygen interface for this repository. Okay, I give up. <laughs> Thank you, Tulika. Thanks, Stefan.